So Julius, as the Panthers go, Xavier Johnson goes. Yeah, if he can stay out of foul trouble and keep his rhythm, he's a guy that can create for himself and others off the dribble. If he's knocking down his, his three-point shot, though, it's going to be a long night for you defensively. See the Panthers' starting lineup. Johnson out there, McGowan, Champagny, Terrell Brown, and Ryan Murphy. And I know there's a guy in that starting lineup in Justin Champagny that you like a lot, Julius. I love Champagny. He's a freshman. He's a guy who can shoot the ball. He always finds a way to, to make things happen even when a play isn't called for him. So I really love his energy around a basket. That's a heck of a start right there for the Panthers. An alley-oop slam for Terrell Brown. Had a little assist from the rim, but he gets fouled as well. So he'll go to the line for another one. I'm sure that was done by design. Get your big fella involved early. Some great coaching by Jeff Capel. That's called setting a tone right out of the gate. You see the Panthers now trying to set the tone defensively with some full court pressure. You got to punch these teams in the face first. You know, the last time we had an opponent come into this building, Nickel State, they upset the Panthers. So I'm sure, you know, they, they remember that when they come out and hit Arkansas first. Tipped around and ends up in the hands of Champagny defensively. Now Ryan Murphy pushing for Pittsburgh. And we'll see a lot of this all night long. You see this extended 1-3-1, kind of 2-3 zone look for Arkansas Pine Bluff. We'll see that all night. And that was one of the things that Jeff Capel told us. He was a little nervous about heading into this game. What it does is exactly what you saw from McGowan is make you settle for a lot of outside shots and stand around instead of penetrating. You have to penetrate the pass against these zones. They have a guy who can shoot the ball, Murphy. Maybe we'll see him run the baseline a little bit from corner to corner. Change it up. The man with the ball for the Golden Lions right now, Daquan Morris, was one of the guys that was spotlighted by Jeff Capel in shoot around today. Heck of an athlete. We'll see how he progresses through this game with the Panthers. Xavier Johnson thought about it. Ryan Murphy wants all three of them, doesn't get them. Hits the top of the backboard, it'll be Pine Bluff basketball. He didn't think about it. <laughs> Let it go right away. Well, you know how shooters are. Hey. The moment they get some daylight, it's got to go up. Shoot or shoot. Carrying the ball up the floor for the Golden Lions, Jamil Wilson. The rest of the starters for Pine Bluff, Markel Carter, Markedrick Bell. Daquan Morris and Chris Smith, who's wearing number 50 tonight, usually number 34, had a jersey change before the game. Rebound down to the Panthers. Ryan Murphy wants a three again. This time misses. This one thrown into the backcourt. Saved nicely by Johnson. Panthers with under 15 on the clock. A nice dish underneath. Champagny doesn't get the roll, but he will head to the charity strike. Always around that basket. <laughs> There is Jeff Capel, second season with the Panthers. You see a ton of career wins. VCU, Oklahoma, and now the Panthers. Spent a bunch of years with Duke as an assistant. He's known as a recruiter. I would say, got a guy by the name of Blake Griffin out of Oklahoma. I would say that was a pretty good recruit for him. This guy at the line is somebody he's been excited about in Champagny. And he actually told us that even though Champagny has actually played pretty well as a freshman for this team, he wants to see more out of Justin. Well, he can play. The expectations is high. He must be doing something right in practice. You got to love it as an incoming freshman, though. To get time right away. That's been the story for this Panther team for two years in a row now. Young guys expected to immediately add some scoring and some offensive production for this team. See a traveling violation on the way down as Chris Smith tried to pull the rebound, but he fell, lost his footing. I would like to see Murphy move around. He's just standing on that one side. Not much action, relocate, cutting through. What a leaping catch there for Morris. Loose ball comes up with Johnson, but there was the athleticism of Morris. You saw it sky for that basketball. Now Champagny misses, tapped around underneath. Still loose, high potato, and ends up in the hands of Smith. 
That Panther offense looking a little stagnant, not a ton of movement on the offensive end. Defensively, Panthers in their usual man. It's the zone. Pond Bluff playing that zone, making you stand around. They like to match up a little bit in it, so it takes you out of your rhythm. End of the shot clock, offensive rebound in the first points for Pine Bluff. It's Markedrick Bell with the deuce underneath. Johnson pulls it out smartly, waits for his offense to get there. Before then, he pushed it. I think that's the best way to beat the zone is in transition. Don't let him set up. I mean, he has the athletes around him. Into the middle, Brown tries a 10-footer. Back iron, no good. And we're seeing exactly what Jeff Capel was a little worried about is all the offensive players kind of standing straight up, not a lot of dribble penetration. Everybody just kind of looking around with the ball above their heads. Not only that, but no cutting through. You don't see any movement. Five to two in the early going for the Panthers. Takes you out of your rhythm. End of the shot clock, offensive rebound in the first points. For Pine Bluff, it's Markedrick Bell with the deuce underneath. And you heard it right there from Jeff Capel's mouth. It's, it's been a struggle for Xavier Johnson in the early going this season, dealing with a lot of different expectations as a player. And he said it right there. You go from being a guy, Julius, that nobody really knows about, and all of a sudden you're on, you know, top second round draft pick boards leading into this year. What do you think Xavier Johnson needs to do differently in the early season here to get his confidence back? Just having fun and letting the game come to him. I think, you know, in the city of Pittsburgh and nationally, he's been getting a lot of recognition. So he's trying to prove that he deserves it. Might be a little pressed. Just relax, play basketball. He's been playing it all his life. That second half against Monmouth, he really looked like himself. Looked like he had his swagger back a little bit. 13 of his 15 on Monday coming in the second half. Last year... First pit player ever named to an all-ACC freshman team. So the promise is there. Just has to put it out there on the floor and execute. 7-2 lead for Pitt. The turnaround jumper no good. Panthers packing it in defensively. Looking good so far. And a foul far away from the basket. Committed by Jordan McNair. Just gotta accept that pressure anyway. Cause you know, on the next level, you're gonna run into the likes of a Russell Westbrook, James Harden. Come on, it doesn't get any easier. <laughs> Way back when he was his assistant. Jeez. He actually compared one of his guys, Daquan Morris, to you. And his athletic ability is. Well, let's see. <laughs> let's see. Don't disappoint. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, we already <laughs> saw a great athletic catch by Morris in transition. He's not on the floor at the moment. Rebound down to Murphy. Marcus Wallace with the miss. A couple of subs on for Pine Bluff. It's Eric Hamilton. Guy was highly touted as a grad transfer. That one batted around. Now coming back in transition are the Golden Lions. Got to change ends a little faster for Hamilton. He'll see the floor a lot more if he get up and down. The miss by McNair, a good dish to Champagne. Goes underneath and makes it go down. Nice dish from Xavier Johnson in transition. I would like to see the Panthers pick the tempo up. Get after him. Well, you said it before, the way you beat a zone, just beat him down the floor, and you know the Panthers have the speed to do that. Especially with a guy like with a first step like Xavier Johnson can blow past anybody in Division One, Turnaround jumper rolls out. The battle for it. Pops out into the hands of Murphy. He's looking for teammates. Over to Johnson. Murphy, a deep one from the T in the logo. Eric Hamilton battling and a good finish. Eric Hamilton looking very active off the bench so far. That's where the advantage is between him and Brown. If you're going to stand around, throw it into one of those guys and watch them go to work. Don't do it on the, on the perimeter. Hamilton's a guy that was expected to be a big contributor in the front court for Jeff Capel and the Panthers this year. He's also had his struggles in the early going, trying to find his way on this roster within the run of play. Underneath defensively now. Has Smith. Smith gets his own rebound. Goes back up. 
No foul, and here come the Panthers the other way. Nice straight up defense underneath. Transition you expect to take time. You have a guy like Johnson McGowan's Tony who's been here a year, comfortable already. It's a nice try underneath by Xavier Johnson. Got tipped away, but Champagny, a nice job cleaning it up. A nine-point lead. Back with you at the Peterson Event Center. 13-2 advantage for the Pitt Panthers, the home team tonight. Arkansas Pine, Pine Bluff on the road yet again. You see, this is their upcoming home schedule, Julius. You notice there, November 25th against Champion Christian. They don't play at home again until January 18th. 16 of the first 19 games for this team played on the road. I know that was something that blew your mind earlier. Absolutely, because, you know, the traveling, staying in the hotels, the flights, it just wears on your body, it wears on you mentally. So I give them a lot of props to be able to fight through that. It should build a lot of character once they start conference play. It'd be tough. I've had three games in six days coming into today. They were tied at halftime against Kansas State on Monday in what was looking like a potential upset special. Now they're down 11 quickly to the Panthers. On the road yet again. 11 of their 12 non-conference games in total on the road. And they're shorthanded. And they're shorthanded, as we haven't talked about quite yet. But two of their best players on this team, two returning starters from last year, out for this game. Sean Doss, number 21, not with the team tonight, and neither is Terrence Banyard. Two guys that were on the team last year, juniors, leading scorers coming into the year, and they're out tonight. They were out against Kansas State, so shorthand. George Ivory was excited about a couple of guys that he spotlighted for us that he thought might be good contributors tonight. Daquan Morris, 23. We talked about him already. Underneath, rattling around. Somebody had a hand on the basket there. Now it's going to be a foul in the backcourt. Isaac Bassey. That was a grown man rebound right there. You got to go up <laughs> and get that thing with two hands in traffic. They pay people a lot of money to go up there and grab them with two hands. Justin Champagny making an impact. Panthers still trying to navigate their way through this Pine Bluff zone. It's 11 point, first. sorry Julius, it's 11 a point lead, but honestly they, they haven't gotten a ton of shots to fall from the perimeter so far. Of course, as soon as I say <laughs> that. that one, yeah. keep, keep talking about it, yeah. they might fall. <laughs> Johnson after hitting the three, tries to force a turnover, can't quite do it. Oh, yeah, that was in rhythm. He's passed them up before Murphy took a... Two from the field so far, both of them three-pointers. Arkansas Pine Bluff, one of 13 so far tonight. Bassey underneath, has some size, trying to get some space. He gets fouled on the way up. That's a way to end the coach, Drew, get to the foul line, get some easy ones. Bassey at 6'11", fighting down low for George Ivory and the Golden Lions. Down 14, 10 minutes going in the first half. Got to give credit to the big fellas. They, got, they have a tough job. I didn't appreciate it as a player, but... They have to hedge, they have to rebound, they have to help when us little guys get beat off the dribble. Come on. <laughs> 6'11 is hard. Come on. How many 6'11 guys, you know, can get up and down this floor with these little 6'3 guys? <laughs> well, it's not as easy for those guys to get out to the top of the key and hedge as it might be for somebody like you. <laughs> Champagny kicking himself there. There's two members of the Panthers front court. We talked to Jeff Capel about the front court too, Julius, earlier. He said they, that he needs a lot more from them, obviously, and he said if they do a few things correctly and not worry about scoring, then that's when he's going to be happy with them. And what are those few things, the things that nobody really wants to think about? It's defense, rebounding, and screening. And if they can do those three things well, then this Panthers team is going to be in good shape. Yeah, it's only the things that Dennis Rodman got himself into the Hall of Fame for doing. So it's not that you don't recognize him. It's just that it's not flashy. It's nothing that we really talk about. But in regards to winning, you've got to have them. You've got to have guys... We're going to do the dirty work. And you mentioned it. I mean, it's a 
it's a grueling task down there. And to have to also worry about getting up top into the pick and roll, make sure you're defending it well, hedging out, as you said, it's a tough job as a front court member. Checking out is another member of that front court that has contributed a lot recently, especially in that West Virginia game. As Abdul Kareem Koulibaly heads to the bench now, the freshman for the Panthers. He's a number, another guy that is going to have to contribute on the front line. Oh, yeah. Against West Virginia, all bodies have to be on deck. They were huge. He played really well in the absence of Terrell Brown, who had some trouble with the Mountaineers here at the Peterson Event Center. That one off the side of the backboard for Champagny. And here comes McNair the other way. Morris, a jump stop in the lane. That was a nice smooth jumper, just didn't get it to fall. You mentioned the big guys. Imagine being Jordan McNair at 5'8", <laughs> running up the court like that. <laughs> trying That's to ignite advantage. the break. Use that speed. <laughs> you got to use that speed against the trees. It's the center of gravity, right? <laughs> Shifty. Yeah. Morris will inbound for Pine Bluff, down 14. You know, we get the benefit of the doubt as little guys also. You know, you could flop. A big guy didn't invent flopping. It was a little guy, trust me. It had <laughs> to be a little guy that invented flopping. Well, I don't know. Can you really call a little guy flopping? Is it really flopping? Absolutely it is. <laughs> I don't know. If you get run you gotta over. Sell it. You got to sell it. Panthers working through the zone, looking very active now. A lead will do that for you. Underneath Champagny in the short corner. There's Tony. That was a great pass. There's a great cut by Tony from the weak side as well. Now McNair pushing. Tony couldn't get it to go. They have the guys that can operate in that area, and Tony and Champagny that can catch it there, make a pass, or put it on the floor, exploit that foul line extended area. Great pass underneath and a big slam. Markedrick Bell. Okay. Talk about some hops right there, Julius. He got up and around Terrell Brown for the flush. He's giving us our money's worth. Oh, wait. We didn't pay for these seats. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of the things about being an announcer is you get the best seats in the house and you never have to pay for them. Yes, sir. It's an amazing deal. Yes, sir. <laughs> and talk basketball. It doesn't get better. That's right. Turnover by the Panthers. First turnover so far for Pittsburgh. Morris into the lane with the left. Gets fouled this time. Ten-point lead for the Pitt Panthers at home over Arkansas. What about it, though, George Ivory, the, the head coach for Pine Bluff, he remembered you from that game because he was insistent on that staff, mm -hmm. and that's what I was talking about earlier. He loved your athleticism at the time, and I can't believe he actually remembered you in the pregame meeting. It was cool, that, that whole dynamic of him, you know, being there and me playing until you brought up that it was 17 years ago. <laughs> then it wasn't so cool. Like, once you put the number to it, it was like, oh, my God. <laughs> Because you say 2002, and it's like, oh, that was, you know, a couple of years ago. Yeah, right. When, in fact, it was not. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Yeah. Look at that reaction. Because that was the Jeez. moment that I said 17 years ago. Yeah. See, I well, didn't even see it because I'm too worried about doing the math in my head, making sure 17 was actually the right 17 number. 17 years ago. Incredible. Unreal. I'm sorry to do it to you, it's man. Okay. It's okay. <laughs> we well, got a rag on you at well, some it's point. Gonna <laughs> <laughs> it's going to happen sooner or later, right? That's right. Hamilton fouled. You know, I, I got to fill the spot of Jeff Hathorne, usually in the seat next to you. He rags on you all game, all the time. So I got to fill that spot. Yo, well, you have it easy. He's actually filling the spot for a legend in the Pittsburgh That's area. true. That's true. I wouldn't say that filling his seat is, is an easy job by any means. Not at all. Hamilton at the line, gets it to go. Jeff Capel looking I, on, trying to get this team refocused and find their flow in the early season. You know, one of the things, you know, after the fact, we talked to Coach Capel before, you know, the game's out try to think about like a creative question I would want to ask him and then it hit me 
His brother played at North Carolina. He played at Duke. How is that even possible? <laughs> like, what, what is that about? Yeah. Well, it's an ACC family for sure. A Tobacco Road family. And now the, it, the coolest thing about it to me is now they get to coach together every day. <laughs> Honestly, though. But how is it, I wonder, when those two guys watch a Duke Carolina game together? Yeah, I think the little bro is, is trying to rub it in his face a little bit with the blue pocket square. Oh, I see that. He's he, he trying to sneak it in there. Yeah, look at the other coaches on this bench, though, too. Uh, Tim O'Toole, Mylon Brown, all three of those guys, Tim, Jason, and Mylon, all former head coaches. You see what they did as players. And, of course, Jeff, a four-year starter at Duke in his own right. Spent plenty of time under Coach K at Duke as an assistant. There's a lot of head coaching experience on that bench. And that's got to help when you got a young team like they do. For sure. In regards to development, recruitment, it's an all-star cast. Been around the game for a while. Fine Bluff, meanwhile, cutting into the lead now. Made their last three shots the Golden Lions have. Now it's down to eight. This game of runs. Got to withstand the storm. It's only a matter of time. Teams are a combined one of 11 from three-point range. Tony with a foul on the floor. Nice job muscling underneath. We knew that against the zone, Jeff Cable told us, it was going to be a combination of a few guys in that high post area to try and get into the middle of it, Tony being one of them. Tony's a guy that last year started the year really, really well, slowed down a little during conference play, but this guy is extremely athletic, and if they get him back on track, he's going to be dangerous. I think, he, yeah, he, he has to find his rhythm. He's a guy that can do pretty much anything. It's just a matter of, you know, when and how. Um, is it going to be spotting up in the corner for the three? Is it going to be attacking the glass? I think once he really understands his role, it's only up from there. Tony started the first four games of the year, did not start against Monmouth, and I think that lit a fire under him a little bit. 10.7 rebounds on Monday. You know, it doesn't have to be, you know, a slight to you because you come off the bench. Sometimes it's just rotation. It might be better energy-wise to bring him off the bench. So it could be a, a lot of different things the coach could be thinking in regards to making that change to the lineup. Lions throw it away. But that's what this early season is about for this team. And he, Jeff Cable, talk about being an honest guy. He told us straight up, I'm still trying to figure this team out and what I have at my disposal and who's going to be consistent enough to earn the playing time. So every game is kind of a learning experience for him as well as the players. Yeah, even the, even the veterans on his team are young. Guy just shooting it right there, Xavier Johnson. Type of half for Rhode Island. Point lead for the Panthers. Johnson, two of three from downtown for six points. Good underneath move by Bell. Comes down to the Panthers. Pine Bluff continuing to struggle from the field. Now four of 21, good for a 19% clip. Nice ball movement, ball movement by the Panthers. He's feeling it now. He's started out a little slow shooting it. Hamilton gets it to go and one. Hamilton's been active. 14 point lead for the Panthers. Let's look at Johnson's three. Yeah, he went underneath the screen. Make pay. And a big fella just putting in work. Using the muscles, the weight room. I mentioned it last year. The strength and conditioning coach. Gary over there, he's been telling me to get to come in there in the mornings. I don't know if I'm ready for him. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think you can compete with Gary Christopher. Oh, no. Not yet. I told him I have to get in shape to, to come work out with him. I'm not in shape yet to come get in shape with that guy. It's so funny. He's such a nice guy, fun-loving guy, works really well with the players. Oh, yeah. Positive. you got to have that kind of guy, that kind of personality around the program. You said it, though. Eric Hamilton looked like he'd been putting some time in the weight room. That high-arcing shot comes down off the rim. Cameron Posey with the rebound. Now it's up to Bell and a nice lay-in. Fine Bluff pushing the tempo. Lead to 13 for the Panthers. I do want to touch on Eric Hamilton, though, because we, like I said before, we did ask 
Jeff Capel about him. And he said, heading into this game tonight, Eric Hamilton had only one defensive rebound. And tonight already he has five defensive rebounds, seven total, and eight points to lead the Panthers. He looks like he is ready to play tonight. I think he got the memo. He's going to have to definitely do a better job on the glass being the anchor down there. If, if, if Pitt want to win ACC games, it's going to have to give you a lot more. As he's a grad transfer. He's had three NCAA tournaments under his belt, formerly with Wichita State for a couple years, then transferred to UNC Greensboro. Now as a grad transfer trying to earn his degree in social work here with the Panthers. He's been a guy that had a lot of expectations. Panthers needed a big guy in the offseason. Hasn't shown up to this point in terms of this season, but tonight he looks like a new player and a new man. So it's good to see Eric Hamilton with some new legs underneath him. Well, yeah, you know, with him coming from somewhere else, it's still similar to being a freshman, different program, di different atmosphere, different players. You know, dynamic is just something that you have to learn. You know, but it was great for the Panthers losing Chukawuka, who gave the Panthers some really good minutes last year. Um, to have a guy come in and actually fill in that role, being active off the bench. Not only that, he, he brings some senior leadership as well. I mean, that's something that the Panthers are definitely starved for, is a guy with some experience, and he definitely brings that. Looks like a Division I basketball player. Tonight we're seeing what he's capable of. He plays with that edge, that, that anger with him. Bell kicking it out to Wilson. Wilson on the bounce. Now it's Bell again, tries a deep one. He's been only underneath so far, he misses the long try. Under three minutes, 11 point lead for Pittsburgh. Saw Ryan Murphy, the previous possession, Julius, miss another three. He's 0 of 5 from downtown tonight. It's the sharpshooter. Keep shooting it. <laughs> It'll fall, that's what shooters do. But the advantage is inside. With this guy. As he comes right back, Eric Hamilton. Koulibaly heads to the bench again. Markel Carter coming on for Pine Bluff. Markedrick Bell will take a seat. Carter had 22 points against Kansas State on Tuesday. Corner three is good for Johnson. And that's doing something else for Murphy. Shot is not falling. Shot fake, put it on the floor, kick it out 4-3. He's a guy who's going to, you know, against ACC teams, Pitt is not going to have a size advantage. So they will need him to keep continue taking those shots. He can't shy away just because the shot is not thrown. Despite Johnson's early season struggles on the offensive end, shooting almost 40% heading into this game tonight, 3 of 4 from beyond the arc, 9 points to lead the Panthers. Here he goes off the bounce. A great look underneath to Hamilton, who finishes it. And that's going to force George Ivory to take a timeout. A 16-point lead for Pittsburgh. Johnson, Hamilton, everybody getting involved. Welcome to Pittsburgh. You're watching college basketball on the ACC Network. It's his own about 90% of the time. He was nervous about the way his team would react. So far, it looks like they're picking it apart as this first half wears on. Taking the shots in rhythm is the most important thing, not just jacking up and settling. Robert Boyd with a triple for Pine Bluff. Lead down to 13. But it just makes you stand around. Kind of just pass the ball, no real movement. Quick perimeter passing for Pittsburgh. Johnson looks underneath, short corner now. Champagne turns around. Tony deep in the corner. No good, and there's a foul underneath. It's a war going on down there. Eric Hamilton was tied up with Robert Boyd. Foul will go to Boyd. It's a tall Taj trying to keep that guy off the offensive glass. <laughs> this is what you were talking about earlier. The big bodies underneath. Yeah. Constantly fighting like that. And then, you know, a guard get beat off the dribble. He's expected to step up and help. Box out, lay a body, rebound, outlet. Panthers in the bonus, so a one and one for Hamilton. Misses the front end. Under a minute to play in the first. Pine Bluff down 13, trying to cut into it.
man-to-man -man defense by the Panthers. Horris tried the reverse attempt, got fouled on the way up. You know, against these teams, sometimes you feel like you can get away with being a little lazy on defense. It's not a, the greatest habit to have. Just because you're bigger. I can make up for it with my size, maybe jump up there and get the block shot. We'd like to see some rotation, maybe try to take the charge. Would you take a charge there, Kevin? That was my Sacrifice specialty. Your body? When I used to play, I always <laughs> did. I mean, I came off the bench and it was either a corner three or taking a charge in the chest. That was my way of contributing. Okay. Because I couldn't keep up with anybody. <laughs> You got to know, hey, that's the skill set is knowing what you do well. <laughs> Something like that. Time out on the floor. Jeff Cable wants to get the most out of this final possession of the first half. 11. Sutton. <laughs> well, now it's all readily available. You know, you grow up with that stuff, and now it's all back. It's at your fingertips. Hey. It's like everything this day and age. Yo, it's the gift and the curse. Xavier Johnson with the ball out top. He's going to watch the clock tick down. 20 seconds on the first half clock. See what Jeff Capel drew up in the huddle. Going man to man. Into the middle, tries to get a layup. Hamilton, who else, gets the putback. Hamilton with 12 points to lead all scorers in the first. Clock ticking down. Into the middle, it's Morris, skying high. This one rattles out, no good. A 13 side to Pete. Julius, we talked about the win on Monday against Monmouth, right? The first half, struggles for the Panthers. Second half, a much different story. Well, yeah, carried over. Against Monmouth, 64% shooting so far tonight. Shooting 38% from the floor and defensively looking pretty active. So Jeff Capel and the rest of the pit coaching staff got to be happy. On the other side for Pine Bluff, though, what do you got to do to try and narrow this thing down? Because they're not out of it by any means, only a 13-point deficit. One possession at a time. So far, they got to stop right now. Now you have to figure out how to get to the basket. Maybe, you know, get to the free throw line. But it's a tough challenge when you're undersized. Usually you will want to pick up the pace, but I don't know if picking up the pace against this Panther team with Trey McGowan's and Xavier Johnson running the show is, in, in, you know, <laughs> something that you want to yeah. consider. You might want to slow them down a little bit. Eighth turnover for Pine Bluff. Short corner jumper for Champagny, nice and smooth. In rhythm, once again, he's just a guy who just always around the basket. Short corner. Dish underneath and a big dunk from Bell, the second time we've seen that tonight. Got some hops. Went up strong. First Golden Lion into double digits. How about the call from Coach Kepler to start the game, though? I mean, you said it to start the second half. You know, they've been getting off to slow starts. Then to draw a lob for Brown. For sure. It's an easy way to get your guys going. That was a lob to Bell from Morris. Came up empty. Now Johnson's speed <laughs> took a bunch of steps as he ran up the court, but they're going to call a foul instead. Nice pass off the penetration. Strong finish. That's a little shack esque right there. He likes it. Got it. A little bit more of that. Keep fighting, keep fighting, get a stop. Penetration. Lead still 13 for Pitt. Murphy's been cold, dishes to McGowan's, and he walked on the way. We'll just pack it in. Outside of Xavier, Xavier Johnson. Panthers have been struggling to shoot the ball. I would just, just pack it in. There's someone else to shoot the ball. Is there a point where maybe you start shading a guy over toward Johnson? You see how cold everybody is? See Johnson just eating up McNair right now. Gotta get after him. Set the tone. Is there a point where you could double Johnson as an opposing coach? I'm, it's, it's hard because he's just so crafty off the dribble. It's just difficult, unless it's a pick and roll and, it's, and the guy is there. But you couldn't just run a guy out of him. His vision is too good, it's too creative. 
McNair from the corner, bottoms it out. First bucket of the night for McNair. Now it's down to 10. It's Pine Bluff showing some life. Fight for it, and it's going to go Pine Bluff's way. Nice defensive play. Daquan Morris, McNair was in on it as well. That's the energy. Morris come, he's clapping his hands by the table. Take another look at who it went off of. It's the fourth turnover of the night. Eric Hamilton will exit now. So he just picked up his third foul. Terrell Brown will come in for him. Trey McGowan's with a couple of fouls for the Panthers as well. And three guys for Pine Bluff with a couple of fouls. Xavier Johnson with the steal. He's out in the break going up and slams it home. Good defense. Good transition offense. Finishes it with the Tomahawk. It's very athletic for a point guard. Xavier Johnson's 32nd career game in double digits. He's only played 39 in his career. As you see, Bell sink the three. 13 points for Marquedrick Bell. That leads all scorers now. He's picking up where some of the other great point guards at this university has done. The Brandon Knights of the world. Look at the Johnson dunk again. I don't know if any of them can get up like that, though. What do you think? Do we have any point guards that can get up? I, I don't know, JP1. You. Why don't you tell I me? I wasn't a point guard. So, you know, <laughs> I can't take credit for that. Well, he's got the one on the jersey, though. Oh, is yeah, the yeah. Thing. He, and he's repping it right. Right. He's definitely doing that. Looks good on him. He looks better on him, especially with the gold shoes. Man, what a compliment from you. His, his swagger. Oh, yeah. I would let him know if he wasn't repping it right. Champagny misses the free one after getting the and one. Champagny now with 10 points. I'm waiting for Morris to, to try Brown one time. Looked like he thought about it driving baseline right there. Yeah. Go ahead, try it. There's the shoes, Julius. Oh, yeah. They would, they would have went great with the gold in our uniforms way back in the day, way back 17 years ago since you had to bring that up. Yeah. <laughs> they would have went wonderful with those baggy dresses we wore. Yeah, the old uh, torch font. <laughs> Murphy gets this one to go, and he loves it. Finally, he's feeling it a little bit. The bench finally relieved. Ryan Murphy, his seventh try from three, finally goes. Shoot or shoot. Lead is 14 for the Panthers. Pine Bluff driving in. It's McNair. He loses it. Bell. <laughs> Coming off those screens, that was a nightmare. Well, that was one of the things that we saw from Ryan Murphy earlier in the year is running off a bunch of screens, yeah. constantly moving on offense. A big slam for Champagny. 16-point lead for the Panthers. You're being compared to J.J. Redick in any way, shape, or form. We're doing something well. His work rate is up there. Now, would J.J. Redick have gone one of seven? I don't know. <laughs> I'm sure he has before. <laughs> Maybe not in college, though. I don't know. Definitely not in college. Listen, if we're he talking looks, they look they look alike to me. A little bit. <laughs> Here's Champagny. And he's always just around that basket again. Finishing with the layups with a short mid-range jump shot. Great dish there from Johnson as well. It's like he can get you, he can get you 10 and 5 in his sleep. Champagny with 12. It's his fourth straight game in double figures. Just before that, Pine Bluff turned it over in their own corner. He just has good size. He reminds me of, of Chevy Troutman, a guy that you just don't have to call a play for. Just around the basket, great touch, good athlete. It's going to be a problem. Champagny, you're talking about Chevy Troutman. 
He led all scorers with 15 the last time the Panthers played Pine Bluff. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you had 14, <laughs> and he outscored you that day. I'm not shocked at all. <laughs> Chevy Troutman, a pit favorite, obviously. If you're getting compared to him as a freshman, and as Justin Champagny, you're doing something right. He rocked the hairstyle, too. Chevy yeah. used to have the fro. He's still got that. He got a pony. He, he, he's, he's a studio is what we call it now. He's, <laughs> he's a rock star now. He okay. put it in a ponytail. Panthers up by 17. Just a few moments ago, it was a nine-point lead, and Pitt exploded. 8-0 run over the last couple of minutes for Pitt. Held ball is going to stay on the Pine Bluff side. Guys from the Empire State. See, Champagny's first career start was Monday against Monmouth. Recorded a double double, also the first of his career. You see what he's done tonight 12 points, five rebounds, following it up in a positive way. And to think that Coach Capo is expecting more from him after posting a double double. He's doing something, something well in practice on a day and on a daily basis. And it's crazy with him, too. Jeff Cable told us a, a pretty interesting story about him, that in the summer, they realized that Justin Champagny had a dislocated pinky. And he had it for like a year, that, and he didn't even know it. And then all of a sudden, he has to get surgery, sits out for a while. When the Panthers went to Italy over the summer, barely even practiced or played. And then he had to adjust to right away. All of a sudden, he's back in the thick of things, and he's ready to play as Bell flushes another one. And it was a crazy thing. And then on top of that, they thought he might have been hurt with a knee. Thought it might have been serious. Then it wasn't. A couple weeks out from the season, oh, you're fine. Your right. knee's good. Your finger's good. You're ready to play. And as a freshman, he stepped in and contributed in a huge way for Pittsburgh in a way that maybe nobody ever really expected him to. It says a lot about his character. Just going with the flow. I don't think I can do it. I remember my freshman year, the ups and downs taking a lot better than I did, for sure. It's rough on your body. I didn't go through any injuries, but for him to go through a, a couple injuries already. And he's a gamer. Yep. Let's look back at the bell dunk just a moment ago. It's three dunks, and he's rocked the rim every time. You see Tony looked at it like, you know, do I want to get up there and try? <laughs> I think that was a smart move. It's just easier sometimes to get out of the way. <laughs> a lot easier. <laughs> yeah. Especially if you're a step late. You're going to find yourself getting a lot of text messages by your friends. We saw you on the highlights. Markedrick Bell with 15. He's the only Golden Lion in double figures tonight. That one misses everything. Panthers coming the other way. Out to the corner. It's Murphy. He's definitely going to fire it. Gets front iron this time. The tap attempt by Tony doesn't go. Good effort. Mishandled by Morris. Finally holds on to it and kicks it out to the top. It's Wilson. I think Murphy might feel a little pressed to make those threes. Understanding that he is the guy. The number's going to be called when the Panthers play. The teams played on the zone. That was the thought coming into tonight for sure. Panthers couldn't take advantage of that in transition. Johnson left alone. He'll take the three and misses. This one will stay with the Panthers. Bell had a hand on it. Johnson with 11. One of three Panthers in double figures tonight. Hamilton and Champagny with 12 apiece. Panthers taking care of the basketball tonight. Four turnovers. Pine Bluff with 13. Johnson to the bench. Onibuchi Ezekuda comes on for him. Sophomore guard, and so does Eric Hamilton as Terrell Brown heads to the bench. I think this may be the first time I saw the Panthers go without Trey. McGowan's and Xavier Johnson together. When you're up by 17, you feel like you can do that a little bit. Trey McGowan's has had two fouls for much of this game been playing with it, playing pretty clean. McGowan's scoreless, though. That's something you don't see very often. Only two field goal attempts. I'm about to check back in. 
still good. It's not that, you know, it's not about the stats, but just to see him get a rhythm. Koulibaly out to Murphy. They wanted him to go with the Kevin McHale right there. Up and under. Nice lay-in by Koulibaly. Never brought the ball down, and that's the key. 19-point lead now for Pitt. I was hoping he went up with it. <laughs> <laughs> Finish that off. Nice move. 19-point advantage for the Panthers. We'll be back in a moment. Thanks for joining us tonight on the ACC Network. As the lob attempt gets tipped, it's off the hand of Tony. It'll go Pine Bluff's way. Kevin Wheeler and Julius Page with you tonight. Panthers on a 12-2 run over the last five and a half minutes. That's the play right there. That's again Jeff Capel going to the clipboard to try and get Tony involved offensively. Tony hasn't hit a shot from the field tonight, has a couple of free throws for two points. I think he'll get it going. Let's keep getting the ball around that foul line area, make something happen. He's skilled enough. That's the Jerron Brown area right there. He used to make a, a killing there against Syracuse when they played zone. We thought we were going to see a, a lob play tonight at some point for Daquan Morris. We haven't seen it yet for Pine Bluff, number 23. We've seen him get up a couple times, but never for a dunk. Not in this game. Tony can't get it to go, but he'll go to the free throw line. Not to try it off the dribble. Watching these guys, sometimes I forget that these Tony, Xavier, and McGowans are just sophomores. I feel like they've been here for so long. It was a long year last year, and, and you think that because they all started basically as soon as the season began. All those guys were in the starting lineup and expected to contribute. Those guys, those three that you mentioned, Johnson, McGowan's, Tony, accounted for almost 50% of the team scoring last year. And it was a pit freshman record between the three of them, averaging 35 points a game. It, it's impressive what they were able to do last year. Great experience and something to build on. Couple that with some, some fresh recruits that can play. Program will be turned around in no time. Foul on the floor. But it's what Jeff Cable talked about after that game against Monmouth, is the expectations now that come with being, you know, excelling as a freshman. And people see what you're made of and see the talent that you have. And then guys like Johnson, McGowan's, Tony, they're still trying to figure out how to play college basketball as sophomores. They get a year under their belt, but the learning experience doesn't stop. And every single night, they're being taught lessons. Every single day in practice, they're being taught how to play at this level. And without the veteran leadership on the team to actually help you through that, you know, that's something that I think gets get taken for granted is having maybe a senior on the team that can walk you through the ins and outs and break things down for you. I know when I was here, I had some 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 older guys be able to give me a few tips on how to, you know, maybe get better with it or how to read something. So to not have that, I think, might be the biggest thing that they're missing. See the returning scorers in the ACC across the board. Xavier Johnson at number three. Of course, Jordan Wara, and we know what he can do at Louisville. Xavier Johnson third on that list. Trey McGowan's at 14th on that list. Those were points per game last year. And when you're on a list like that, a top 15 player in the ACC, things are expected of you. And unfortunately, everyone else outside of the team, they expect things to happen faster than maybe they should. You know, I know you become impatient. People start talking about making changes and things of that nature. I'm not a big fan of doing things like that. I feel once you get a guy, support him, even when he has that one or two off seasons, and let him work and recruit out of it. But hey, I don't cut the check, so. That's right. 
Well, what this Pitt team was able to do with such a young roster last year, I don't, I don't think you can understate it. You know, four ACC wins, but there were a lot of people who thought they wouldn't get that many. Sure, with a new coach also. I was shocked that he brought in the talent that he did bring in. Well, he's known as a recruiter. There's a guy he recruited this past offseason, Justin Champagne. He's making his presence felt tonight with 14 points. Leads the Panthers. McGowan's on the break. McNair able to get in there and take it away. Talk about low center of gravity coming in and taking it away. Now it's Bell laying it in in transition. I think Coach Ivory gave us the wrong guy. <laughs> well, he said he highlighted Bell, the Panthers. To the last whistle, he's competing. Bell with 17 points, 8 of 16 shooting for Pine Bluff tonight. Three personal fouls. Underneath, Samson George newly into the game. Couldn't get it to go, no foul called. Bassey was down there defending. On the bright side for Arkansas Pine Bluff, last game they had Carter go off and Bell was playing well today. So maybe when they're at full strength, those guys will have, you know, the confidence to contribute. Xavier Johnson with another flush. Thirteen points for Xavier Johnson. That's a, that's a breakaway dunk. You gotta give him something. Something, something nice special. <laughs> yeah. Come on. He just duplicated what he did before. You gotta give him something better than that one, man. Come on. Murphy thought about it. Koulibaly at the top of the key, turns around, nice dish to George, goes up and gets fouled. Samson George just couldn't get off his feet quick enough. Here's the breakaway for you, Julius. Nice tip by Murphy. He looking back, nobody coming. Toss it off the glass to yourself. But he got up there. <laughs> That's a little much, my friend. Uh, I don't know if Coach Cable would appreciate that. You don't he, think so? I don't know. I don't know. But then again, that might be a good sign for Mr. Johnson getting his getting his spunk back, his flair, his confidence. If not at that particular time, when is the best time to do something? That's like true, that? I guess. <laughs> George buries it. That's a good point you made, though, about Pine Bluff, where you know they're they're starting to find guys that can contribute. Tonight it's Markedrick Bell. The other night it was Markel Carter. We know that DeQuan Morris can play, but they're without their two best guys right now, and Sean Dawson, Terrence Banyard. So if they get those two guys back strong at some point in the next few games, they could be something to uh, to be reckoned with in the SWAC. There's Bell again, a nice reverse layup, getting high. Let's put it all together, get their chemistry. A couple tough practices. Pine Bluff still winning the rebound margin by four. They've turned it over 17 times. Koulibaly blocked underneath. Here's Morris skying with a two-hand dunk. Easy hops off the two feet. I can see the comparison. I don't know. A little bit. I think that I, I would like to have a jumping competition between the two of you. Well, right now he's going to win by a landslide. I don't know. You were talking <laughs> a big game earlier because you're you're talking about dunking in your loafers earlier. I can do that. Here, easily. let's take a look at it again. Yeah, two foot jumper. Oh yeah, effortless too. And he's done it before. You can tell. I'd say the same thing to him though that you said about Johnson. In this game right now, you gotta give me a little more. Oh, well, you see the guy still running in transition, so <laughs> you know with Johnson, nobody was really sprinting to get after him, so that's when you can really get fancy. In that situation, you don't want to in an event that somebody try to, you know, get up there and then you don't want to get injured or anything like that. That was Morris's first field goal of the game. Seven points for Daquan Morris. But you tell the coach afterwards if you want to say, yo, we didn't need all that sauce. Hey, coach, 
Remember you told us, like, practices is for you and the games is for us? <laughs> so, you know, let me do my thing. I don't know. Who said that? I think you're making that up. No, all coaches say that. That's like on every coach refrigerator. They have that post. Practices <laughs> is for me, games are for you. In the coaching fraternity, there's T-shirts <laughs> that get handed out when you join. Johnson for three again, back iron. Tony skying for the offensive rebound, trying to get it to Champagny. It'll stay with the Panthers. Just go up strong with it. Just take it yourself. You can see Tony still being a little timid on the offensive end, working through his own confidence. Jeff Capel described his team as, as young and insecure, which is very boldly honest, but it's something that you can see at times when this team is playing. Oh well, yeah, you know if they had a guy um, that was that had was a little older, let's say like a senior, you would you would just naturally have a hierarchy. But with these guys being so young, they don't really know who's the guy. So it's kind of like everybody trying to see where they fit in at. On the floor, we'll figure it out. I was gonna say on the floor right now, even you've got three sophomores and two freshmen for Pittsburgh, and that's the way they're gonna navigate through much of the season. And they can all play. I don't, I don't think Coach Capel will want to just pinpoint a guy and say he's our guy. He kind of wanted to, he, he wants it to organically happen. Underneath Bell trying again, gets this one to go. You see the roster breakdown. Six sophomores, five freshmen. So 11 players, underclassmen on this roster. And, and those are the guys that are getting the bulk of the minutes. The upperclassmen aren't getting as many maybe you would expect on a team like this but that's part of rebuilding a program and trying to breed talent have them grow up quicker there's champagne guys like champagne that's right 16 points now leads pittsburgh panthers have played well defensively tonight as well and that actually has been the case in the early season Regardless of the game, it's been the offense that's let them down in a number of games. It hasn't been the defense, per se. Putting another solid outing on the floor tonight. I think it's those moments, you know, Florida State come in here. Big game, West Virginia. Guys who can create with ease, just get a little excited. Instead of moving the ball from side to side, tend to try to do it all off the dribble. But hey, I was a, a young guy at one point, tried to do it off, feel like you could win a game with one basket. One possession at a time, you learn the hard way. It takes a couple losses to get that in your brain. Sure. And you become a senior and say, if I only knew when I was a freshman, <laughs> what I know now. Or really, if it's, if I only listened to my coaches <laughs> when I was a freshman. You know, the game is, you know, the pace of it is so different that you're not even really, you don't have time to even think about the coach at this point. You're kind of just playing. Panthers take a timeout to get some subs in. Champagny 